the concept of Pokemon fusing with their trainers is not unheard of. The manga Pokemon Rebirth with its special burst technique showed us what that could look like. But what if instead of the trainers wearing their Pokemon like an incomplete fursuit, it was like Biomerge Digivolution, which made a new kind of humanoid monster. So a complete fursuit. Basically. And yes, once again, we have my buddy Carniex here on the channel to lend us some of his Digimon expertise. Expertise? Brandon shucks. You're gonna make me blush. Well, over on my channel, Brandon is gonna be bringing their Pokemon expertise as we assign types and more to Digimon. Make sure to check out that video after this one and like and subscribe to both of our channels. So to get us started, we're going to begin with the original best girl of Pokemon, Misty. Though she was well known for Pokemon such as the Staryu line, Togepi, Horsey, and even Psyduck, one Pokemon that matched up well with her design and is seen on her gym team in the anime is Goldeen. So when fused, Misty and Goldeen become... Magicy, the mermaid Pokemon, a water psychic type, who we worked with Fungusmons on, and who did the art for the rest of this video, so make sure to go check out their links in the description. One aspect of Biomerge is that the fusion was with the rookie stage Digimon, but acted as a final yet split evolution to the line, while incorporating aspects of the entire line's design, as seen with the Sokoyamon line here. So Majesty incorporates aspects of both Goldeen and Seeking, and these little jewels coming off the body are a subtle reference to Misty Staryu. One of the more iconic Misty moments was in the Misty Mermaid, where she dressed as a mermaid for her underwater ballet performance. So this Pokemon's design and category refer to that, while also reflecting her outfit from both the anime and in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Another slight inspiration, per my suggestion, was the floral falal dress sphere from Final Fantasy X-2, as it really matches well with Goldeen's flowy tail and partly informed its psychic typing. A Final Fantasy reference in a Prag Magic video? No. Majesty is the Queen of Kings, commanding over Sea King and Goldeen alike with a gentle yet intimidating hand. Watch out for their signature move, Psionic Wave, which is a 75 base power water type move that hits all opponents across the field and has a chance to confuse them, like a combination between Surf and Water Pulse. Well, I definitely wouldn't be hit by that move with my trusty drying pan here, which leads us into our next trainer, Brock. I just moved house. I thought I had a frying pan, but I don't. The Pokemon we picked is the Jelly to Brock's Donut, his partner Onyx. So when fused, they become Cobrix, the Rock Naga Pokemon, a Rock Poison type. Its category tells us exactly what it is, just like Onyx, a Rock Naga. Naga are a mythical creature hailing from Hinduism and other Asian religions that are usually depicted as some form of half-snake, half-human with very potent venom, which explains Cobrix's partial poison typing. These blue rings on Cobrix's design inform us of its toxic nature, given many animals in real life use vibrant colors as a warning, such as the blue ring octopus, snakes themselves, and poison dart frogs. And on that note, part of Cobrix's poison typing comes from his relationship with the poison dart frog inspired Krogunk, as seen throughout the Sinnoh seasons of the anime acting as a misty stand-in whenever Brock gets up to his lovey-dovey antics. As such, Brock's poison tolerance would have built up over time, seeping into this fusion, much like poison seeps into the body. One other partner of Brock can be seen in Cobrix's more humanoid part, with it looking like a mix between Brock and Geodude. This evolution acts more like a split evolution to Onyx more than an evolution to Steelix, much like Gallantmon is a split evolution from Wargrowmon, with Megidramon acting as its counterpart, Gallantmon being the Mega Charizard Y to Megidramon's Mega Charizard X. And speaking of counterparts, we move on to Mei, who acted as a counterpart to Misty, taking over the feminine protagonist spot. Mei's starter, Torchic, was a parallel to Mei's journey as a Pokemon coordinator. Unsure of itself at first, but slowly growing stronger and more confident over time. And how beautiful of a finale to that character development would it be if these two were to fuse? Maybe during the final round of a contest they would combine to become... Henferno, the Inferno Pokemon, a fire psychic type. Henferno uses flames summoned from its kicks to create dazzling displays of fire, using psychic energy to control the heat of the Inferno, creating a phantasmagoria of vibrant fiery colors. Really broke out your thesaurus for this one, huh, Bran? This dex entry and its psychic typing are inspired by the fusion of Mei and Blaziken's core concepts. Martial arts tends to be associated with the fighting type as seen with Blaziken, but through the lens of Mei's coordinator status, we can see the art of martial arts. I mean, these movements, while they can be useful in combat, are mainly used as a show of discipline, focus, and learning to excel yourself both mentally and physically. And those aren't even my words. I took them directly from my friend who is a black belt in two different kinds of martial arts and runs their own dojo. We also took inspiration from Mei's Cygna suit from Pokemon Master Sex and the Empress of Kicks Chun-Li from Street Fighter. 
And yet another female lead and Pokemon coordinator comes next with Dawn. Of course, her first partner Pokemon Piplup has to be what she fuses with, which could happen as a contest moment just like May. So when combined, they become Penguinette, the Empress Pokemon, a water ice type. Just like Piplup's final stage, Empoleon, Penguinet is inspired by another French monarch that many despised, Marie Antoinette. As unfortunate of a comparison as this is, both Marie and Dawn have a love of art and fashion, with Dawn having the potential to become a great Pokemon stylist. So we leaned into those ideas, infusing some elements of hot couture, a French term for high dressmaking, which is seen as very high fashion, and Marie Antoinette was a big fan of. Piplup already had this kind of overcoat and cape-like aspect to its design, so we transformed that into this kind of winter coat dress combo, which I think is really elegant yet functional for its partial ice typing. Wow, Brandon, are you trying to take over from Matt Pat on style theory? <laughs> Look, he's leaving, all right? I gotta shoot my shot somehow. Anyway, let's move on from Pokemon coordinators and on to Pokemon connoisseurs with Silent. Silent's partner in both the games and the anime was most definitely Pan's age. Say what you want about the elemental monkeys, but there is no better fit for Silent. So when combined, they create Quisage, the herb monkey Pokemon, a pure grass type. With Silent acting as the Brock replacement of his season, he did a lot of the cooking, and was very knowledgeable about what both humans and Pokemon like to eat. Pansage, on the other hand, evolves into Simisage, which is based around Yankee, aka Japanese delinquent subculture. So combine those two elements and what do you get? Probably something like the way of the house husband. Exactly, a monkey chef who can give other Pokemon a beatdown if necessary. Quisage's name comes from cuisine, and while the sage part has always been there, it could also work as a reference to the herb used in cooking. Which Quisage definitely does, shaking its head and tail bushes to unleash a variety of herbs into its cooking that always make its food taste great. <laughs> Move over, Jeremy Allen White, there's a new chef in town. He's right behind me, isn't he? How about we move on to the next fusion before you get berated? Yes, Chef! Obviously, we have Ash's other traveling companion from Unova, Iris and her partner Axew. So when combined, they become Freyax, the Dragoon Pokemon, a Dragon Steel type. Oops, did I sneak another Final Fantasy reference into this video? Whoopsie! How did that happen? Brandon, you commissioned these designs, and also I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy 2. I pre-ordered the deluxe edition of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I played Final Fantasy 16, even though I didn't enjoy it. I have even played Final Fantasy 14 and Crystal Cross. Anyway, both Freax's category and name are Final Fantasy inspired, as the Dragoons are a class of draconic themed lance or halberd wielding knights that are known for their high flying jump ability. Freya Crescent from Final Fantasy IX, one of my personal favorite in the series, is one such dragoon. She also shares her name with the Norse god Freya, a leader of the Vanir gods and a god of both love, fertility, and battle and death. Reflecting both the dragoon side of things and the fact that Iris is a sort of queen of dragons herself, being the Unovan dragon specialist champion. So a bad <laughs> dragon queen Pokemon, huh? Reminds me of Daenerys. Don't say her name. I can't relive that pain. Okay. Well, Freyax's helmet plumage is very purposefully reminiscent of Iris's iconic hair, as Akshi would ride around in it throughout the anime. Freyax can use their physical prowess in combination with their halberd to unleash a devastating signature move, Dragon Jump. A two turn, 120 base power physical dragon type move where the user jumps into the air, then the following turn rains draconic fury from above upon their target, like a more powerful dragon type fly. And for something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have Serena and her partner Fennekin. When combined, they become Kitsupa, the magical Pokemon, a fire fairy type. Kitsupa is inspired by the magical girl trope found across many Japanese animes, such as Sailor Moon, Cardcaptor Sakura, or Tokyo Mew Mew. Or Madoka Magica? Yeah, Madoka Magica. <laughs> With Serena also being a Pokemon performer, which is very reminiscent of Japanese idol culture, fusing the magic of the Fennekin line with that would naturally create a magical girl. The outfit Serena wears when we see her in the Lily Cove contest visually matches the typical Sailor Scout uniform from Sailor Moon, especially when paired with Mei and Lycia's outfits. Kitsuper used their fiery magical staff to disadvantage foes with their signature move, Fairy Fire, a fairy-type status move that burns the opponent and gives max priority to the user's next move. 
Last but not least, we have the man, or should I say men of the hour, Ash and Gary, who will explain simultaneously. So obviously Ash has to fuse with Pikachu. But Gary, on the other hand, was a bit less obvious for its choice. But we decided to choose his partner, Eevee, that eventually becomes an Umbreon, which makes even more sense with Eevee becoming the secondary mascot of the franchise. So when Ash and Pikachu and Gary and Eevee fuse, you get Pulse Chew and Ian Air, an electric fighting type and dark psychic type, respectively. As you can no doubt tell, these two oppose each other, just like Ash and Gary do in the anime. But there are some real deep cuts in their design origins. Before Game Freak went on to create the wildly successful and popular Pokemon franchise, they made a little under-the-radar game in 1994 for the Sega Genesis by the name of Pulse Man. Which, let me tell you, has a wild plot. Check out the Wikipedia article if you get the chance. But Pulse Man is basically the electric harnessing precursor to both Pikachu and Ash, so combining them to pay homage to Pulse Man only felt right. As far as Ian Air goes, Pulse Man had one of those rivals that was just like the main character, but dark and edgy, a la Shadow the Hedgehog, Zero, or Dark Samus, who was named Vale. So Ian Air takes from them. It also takes from Tezcatlipoca, the Aztec Jaguar god Umbreon is inspired by, which does have a human form, so the Umbreon elements transferred onto this design refer to that. The dark psychic typing on Ian Air comes from Gary's transformation from being a jerk to being respectful and wise beyond his years throughout the anime. And Umbreon's counterpart is Espeon, so it plays into that as well. Its name comes from Eon, the end of the evolution's name, and Debonair, a word used to describe someone who is confident, stylish, and charming. Pulse Chew channels electricity through its hands, cheeks, and the discs at its side, which it can use in tandem with each other to let out its devastating signature move, Thunder Smash. A physical-based 95 electric type move in which Pulse Chew channels massive amounts of electrical power into its discs and smashes them into the opponent, with a 30% chance to leave them paralyzed. Ian Air also uses its discs for its signature attack, Dark Smash, a base 95 powered dark type move that basically does the same thing as Thunder Smash, but has a 30% chance to confuse the target instead. Just like Vale can use a similar but slightly edgier version of Pulse Man's signature attack, Voltecker. And those are some Pokemon trainer fusions. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to check out Karn's video linked here. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.